I feel like once you get the internet set up, it's like you feel like you can finally start settling in for good. Yeah, like I've been on I've been on mobile Wi-Fi. Um, on mobile. Mm. Yeah, or like one of those like uh, portable Wi-Fi things. And it sucks. It says it's unlimited, right? It's like, oh, you know, you have unlimited yeah. internet, which is fine. But if you use a certain amount of data, they'll start throttling you. So, like, I have to actually, like, watch what I do because I, I can't watch too many videos during the day or uh, I can't, like, take too many meetings, for example. So I have to, like, kind of prioritize oh. how much internet I use for the day. It's really weird. So. All right. We'll get like two more minutes have as people you, come in. What's up, Audrey? Have you been, have you guys been taking a lot of photos or, or anything? We haven't. I think Gloria has. Oh. She's been, um, she's been kind of like doing uh, a majority of, uh, I guess the kind of exploring and stuff like that. Cause so she's, uh, she's teaching right now. So they went on a trip to like uh lake lake biwa i think uh yesterday and she's like taking taking photos and doing stuff uh, i've been mostly kind of tasked with like setting up the apartment uh which is almost done we're we're almost in a uh a normal live living state uh, <laughs> but uh <laughs> but we, we want to soon like now that we're like kind of settling down and things are getting like more normal uh we wanted to kind of do like photography runs and stuff like that so That'll be fun. I think you should especially take pictures of the food and yes, <laughs> definitely. I agree. That's you, what I'm the most excited to see. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been really holding back on like uh, the, I guess the normal travel stuff. I think um, I've been kind of treating this kind of like how I play games. This, this sounds kind of weird, but like when I play a game for the first time, right? I don't look up anything. Like I don't. Uh, I don't look up strategy guides, I don't look up tutorials, nothing. So it's like, you just kind of go in and then it's always a fun experience getting lost and doing stuff. So like, I kind of like do that in real life as well, where I don't like looking up like, hey, where's the best place to eat in Gifu? Because then you're just going to like the last level, right? But like, every time, right. every time you go, so every time I walk out the door and we just stop by some random restaurant, like they don't even have a sign half the time. Uh, they probably do. I just can't read it. Uh, <laughs> And then, like, it's, it's like, the best thing of whatever it is you've ever had. And it's, like, this no-name place doesn't even show up on Google or doesn't show up the way I Google, um, meaning English Google. And then, uh, you know, it's just, like, every single time. But, you know, you'd miss these places. Or it's, like, you might find the better place, but then you kind of miss all these other places. Like, oh, it's not as good as that one, w w that one I had before, you know? So it's been kind of like a like a fun like adventure, just like you know, seeing like what's the what's the next best thing because you know like the best food that you've had, right? It's just the best food that you've had. So it's like the best udon place that I've been to, the best you know sushi place that I've been to, um, and then it just you keep hitting like the best every single time you leave the house, and it's been like it's been awesome. I don't know, it's really fun, but you know that's just uh, maybe I'm weird. Who knows? I'm, uh, you haven't taken photos. That's <laughs> I think that's the only weird part is that you haven't taken photos. I know. Otherwise, I think everything else sounds like a pretty solid. You know, I'm really bad at social media. I don't know if you guys could tell with my with my daily Instagram posts that I don't ever do. But like, I'm really bad at social media in general. Like, the last thing I think about is like, oh yeah, let's take a picture. You know what I mean? Like, I I do need to get better. My uh, Gloria keeps mm -hmm. telling me to like to do it uh but like i don't know i'm just kind of like it, it, it's funny because I'll, I'll like have a camera and everything i'll like take pictures and even like a lot of the photography stuff that i'll do it's like i'll take the picture but then i just won't post it you know it's like it, it's just like a i don't know if, I, I do i do need to get better at it i am i am bad at it don't take the pictures for social media you're yeah. taking them for yourself and then slightly for us but like you post them right. here. But I mean, even if you don't post them here, I mean, it's for you ultimately yeah. to look at in five True years that. or just whenever you're not in Japan anymore. True that. True that. You're assuming I won't be in Japan anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll talk more as we get into some of the demo stuff. But we have a shit. We have a decent amount of people here. I didn't look over till just now. Yo, how's everybody doing? How's uh how's life? How's the how's the things? But 
<clears throat> let's get into this. So, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be kind of, uh, I, I explained this a little bit a second ago, but um, just for anybody that kind of came in a little bit late. Um, this is going to be kind of a warm-up week, right? Uh, we're going to be covering some form language things, uh, more in a kind of like process slash um, just general workflow type things. I'm not going to cover the topic, uh, the I guess the, the more in-depth things too much because we're going to be saving that for next week, right? Um, so I do have the, uh, the schedule up here for those looking at my screen. Uh, if you're not looking at the screen in Discord, uh, just you know, click on my uh, click on my uh, my screen sharing window um, for those that are new to Discord. Uh, but so you'll notice stream one is six five twenty four, right? So June fifth, twenty twenty four. Um, as you know, today is not that day. But we're gonna be kind of using this for one testing out equipment, make sure everything's good, uh, and then just kind of getting back into the swing of things. Um, there's some like uh, uh, signups and things like that that I kind of want to get into uh, in terms of like the live stream. Plus, uh, this is why we're actually taking that extra week for those that are new to the uh, the digital vegetable group slash new to the just the live streams in general. Right. Um, there is going to there is a live stream plus, uh, I guess, uh, section. Right. So if you actually do want to do the assignments with me, I give you feedback. Um, I'll talk about scheduling on that uh, in a second. Um, but yeah, we do give actual feedback. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a private live stream that we have usually the day before, um, the same time, but the day before, and then uh, we just kind of go from there. So uh, this week kind of gives us time to um, have those people kind of sign back in, as well as the people that are already a part of it, kind of telling them like how we're going to go about that. Because in terms of payments and things like that. Um, I don't have control over that. I just have control over when and wh uh, when that starts and stops. And I've paused it this month because I didn't want the people that uh, had already uh, signed up to kind of paying for essentially two months of me not being there. Um, so it is currently paused right now. I will be starting it up today. Um, and then uh, we'll get into details on what that means for those people. So, uh, but yeah, so going through this, right, we're gonna be doing form language for world building uh, this uh, this month, right, for June. So it is gonna be more of an environment kind of based uh, form language exercise. Uh, a little bit less about props and a little bit less about, uh, I guess, individual things, but more about the world as a whole, right? Because I think uh, something that, um, well, for one, the main reason we're doing this is because uh, when you're part of the live stream plus, right, uh, we you, you get to vote on whatever uh, whatever topics that we kind of, you know, go through. Uh, in March, it was a tie between world building and form language. So we're kind of like doing a little bit of both. Um, it is going to be a little closer to form language just because generally speaking, I am an environment designer. So like you're going to get a little more world building just in general during my streams. Uh, so we're going to kind of do like a like a 70 30 split between form language world building. Uh, but it is still going to be like environment thing. Uh, but yeah, so if you're part of the live stream, plus uh, you get to vote. Uh, it is uh, intense uh, during the voting for anybody that knows. It's like it's weird. It's you, it's like a it's it's like an aggressive fight. It's really it's really like it's actually kind of a miracle sometimes. Like watching the numbers kind of like go up and seeing which ones take over and people like re-voting on the ones that uh, or like changing their vote to kind of like sway some numbers. But anyway, uh, it's really fun. But this week or this month, we're going to be focusing on form uh, form language for world building. And then, um, you know, for basically, if you're new to this, from the start of week one by the end of week four, right, hopefully we're supposed to have a finished portfolio level piece, right? You know, whether it is or not, who really knows. Uh, but that's what we're kind of aiming for. The idea is we're going to kind of walk you through uh, how to get to a final conclusion, right? I think a big problem with, uh, you know, a lot of assignments is sometimes we just do part of it. And then it's like, it, but that assignment itself doesn't actually lead to anything. This way, uh, we're working on something for four weeks. Hopefully, by the end of it, it is something that you can kind of, you know, have, right? Um, there's a lot of people here, uh, you know, from, from previous streams and things like that, that like have, that are doing stuff that are in their portfolios. Um, so if you take it seriously, it is, it can be a real class, but if you just want something to listen to in whatever time zone you're at, at whatever times you want, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a good time as well. So 
Uh, but yeah, that's enough about that. <clears throat> this is going to be posted, or this was already posted in the uh, the schedule section. So if you want a closer look at this, uh, there's really nothing to read. The bold stuff is really what's important. All the other stuff is kind of just little things here and there. Uh, but yeah, but uh, any uh, any questions at all on that before we move on? Cool. All right, so. <clears throat> For anybody joining uh, for the first time, right, um, we're going to be doing the, uh, I'm going to be opening the live stream shop right after this uh, this session. Uh, for anybody, and you can like sign up for uh, the live stream plus, be a part of that and kind of work and get actual, like live feedback. It's going to be recorded uh, and I'm going to be putting it in a, uh, a un, uh, unlisted uh, video. So you'll always have the link, but it won't be like public or anything. Um, and then for anybody that was here in March, right, that uh, like signed up in March and then, you know, uh, we didn't get, uh, uh, was it March, April, uh, April, May, sorry. Um, and we didn't get April, May. So you're going to get uh, June for free, right, because you had already technically paid for the next month. Uh, so for anybody that... Uh, was part of it in March. You already know this. I've already told you this. I'll, I'll reiterate in the live stream plus right after this or after this session. Um, do not sign up for June, right? Uh, or uh, it is. I am going to start it back up again. So just make sure that uh, you're unsubscribed from that reoccurring payment just for uh, just for June. Uh, there are a couple outliers that paid like right at the end uh, where it kind of went through again. Uh, you know who you are if you are listening to this. Um, you'll get J uh, July free as well. Um, so just just to just you know we're just kind of moving the payments down. So if you're like uh, for those of you that already subscribed, uh, you know who you you are already. You'll have you'll have access for June already. So don't uh, don't pay for it. I mean you can if you want. I don't really mind. But just letting you know, you can cancel your subscription for the month, and then you should be okay. Uh, if there's any issues on that, right? Uh, please please just let me know. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to kind of, you know, balance it out essentially. Um, the issue is that when we do the, uh, the server subscription things, I don't have control on like refunds or anything. That's all discord. Um, all the fees and stuff go through them. Um, I literally just have power over when I turn it on and when I turn it off. And I just want to make sure that, uh, the people that are doing this are, you know, getting their fair share essentially. So, uh, but yeah, if there's any, uh, other questions. Just uh, let me know. See the chat. Boom. All right. Cool. So we can close that out. Um, so today, um, we're not. I'm not going to cover too much in terms of like reference gathering and stuff like that. What I am going to do though is I'm going to kind of walk through. Um, I guess just an ideation process, right? Um, uh, we'll talk about like the reference board and like the form language stuff uh, next week. But this is going to be the exact process I'm going to be using to kind of move into uh, my project. So for those that are like uh, wanting to participate next month, um, just kind of like watch this or keep it in mind because this will become relevant in the next week when we start. Um, so it's going to be, um, you know, how I generally speaking approach uh, thumbnail ideation where uh, not, <clears throat> not like a keyframe itself in the sense that like, uh, it's going to be an environment. It, I mean, it could be if, if you want it to be, but it's mostly to be uh, focused around discovering form language, right? Setting up rules, understanding like how we kind of go about just the technical process. Just because generally speaking, I don't, uh, I don't have time to, um, I guess, walk through a little slowly with everybody as I'm doing the live streams. Um, so uh, it is, I guess this is going to be a, a time to kind of like do that while we just, you know, catch up and talk, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, but yeah. All right. So, uh, before we kind of start getting busting into conversation, um, the first, I guess, thing that I want everybody to kind of like know about this process, it's super easy, right? Um, this is something that I like doing because of the way that I am myself, right? So what does that mean? Whenever we're designing, uh, everybody is a particular type of designer, right? Like 
you know, some people are really good at perspective, just the, their understand or the viscom and the very technical, they're very technically minded, right? Um, some artists are very intuitive based, right? They're a little more story driven. They're a little more, um, you know, it's uh, a little more like kind of feeling based, right? They, they kind of feel it out rather than the technicals because the technicals confuse them or whatever it is, right? Um, everybody kind of leans towards a certain way. I don't think, I don't think I've ever met anybody that's like dead center, right? Uh, me personally, I'm a more technical artist, right? And so the reason you have to know that is because when you start doing your designs, you need to know how, um, like, how much of the other side you're going to include. So for me, like, I don't really like start, like, just immediately drawing from, uh, I guess, my, my imagination, because my imagination is trash, right? Um, it's just bad at the end of the day. So what I like to do is I grab a hard round brush, hard round, it's like transfer. So like, you know, if you do, um, if you do a little bit of like, you know, pressure, you just get the, you know, opacity setting essentially. Um, so I'll do that. I'll turn my opacity to 50, right? If you press five on your number line, not your numpad, but your number line, uh, you, you can just change that really quickly. You can probably do that to like 40 as well. Um, and then I just start scribbling right I just kind of start going just making blobs this is that like uh, this is that Rorschach test you know what I'm talking about but the reason I do it this way is because I'm so technically minded to where everything's going to start looking like the same thing right if you ever have problems designing where it's like you, you know what I mean where like you just design the same thing right They're, you always get like it's always the rounder shapes or it's always the squarish shapes whatever it is right um, if you ever have problems doing that, uh, generally speaking, you know, you're, you're probably kind of falling into some sort of, um, I guess, rhythm or you kind of think the same way, right? Like me as a, a more technical artist, like I really like doing forms. I really like doing like perspective and, you know, very technical things. So I have to work in abstraction whenever I can, right? And that's the key thing here is, if you're a very technical artist, right, you have to kind of find ways to where you create things from imagination a little more easily. You know what I mean? Like, there's things that like, I just, I don't know, I'm just like very um, uh, rigid, I guess, when it comes to certain things. So I have to build in opportunities for my, for my brain to kind of see different things, you know? So I'm just like scribbling, I'm just stretching, you know? Uh, I'm just like seeing what happens because if I start off a little too, I don't know, uh, rigid, right? Oftentimes it just comes out looking the exact same. I'll, I'll always design the same airships, right? I always design the same thing and it just doesn't, that's not good. <laughs> so, um, what I'm doing here is I'm just scribbling. I don't know what I'm designing right now. I'm just kind of making lines, doing things and hopefully right in the next 30 seconds i'll start seeing like you know oh that's kind of cool you know oh that's that'd be kind of nice or you kind of move on from there right because the trick with uh with concept art as a whole or i guess as or for me at least is you have i have to trust that i know what i'm doing right i have to trust that like i know how to draw and paint i know how to you know correct something to where it actually makes sense but making something that actually looks interesting, right, is really hard for me. Um, that's usually like the first 10 seconds, the 30 seconds of a, of a, of a drawing. It's always so daunting, right? Especially because you have like, you know, just like a blank page. But once you actually see like, hey, this is, that's kind of cool. You know, it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Then it starts getting a lot easier. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I'm starting to kind of find, find something here. I'm like, I'm not quite sure if I want to stick to it, but, uh, We'll kind of see how that goes but i'm just it's just on opacity right if you actually like if i change this background to like a different value you can kind of see how uh if i colorize it you can kind of see it's still kind of transparent which causes some issues later but we'll we'll talk about that in a second um but right now i'm just cruising you know and like if you're a more like intuitive artist right if you're somebody that like just really doesn't like uh i guess more technical things uh, you know, obviously, you know, I don't, I don't have too much experience with that because that's not me, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, it is something where 
I usually find that we kind of need to do the opposite of what we are, right? Just a little bit, at least in the very beginning, or at least start off certain ways. Because I know artists that like, like I've been, uh, like I'll be at work with somebody, right? Like, like I have no shit. We're 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 on a project, and I was I was working with an artist, and he's very technically minded, just like I am. But we were in the like this like super like heavy like function over form type of mentality for a long time. Um, and it was really like, uh, they were like, yeah, everything works. And this is how like that, this is how you engineer that and this and that. Right. And then like, eventually we just made something that was real. You know what I mean? They just made something that already existed. Right. And as a concept artist, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's not our job for those that don't know. And like, it's, uh, it can be very, I don't know. Uh, it can be very hard to to come up with something new when you're just always just thinking about like pure function, right? Because that's what an engineer does, right? And we're not engineers at the end of the day. We are artists that you know we just kind of make things up, and then we kind of get the illusion of uh, of of like function. You know what I'm saying? Because technically speaking, none of this actually works, right? Um, same reason why spaceships like in uh, in movies are always like sleek look like sports cars things like that and then you see like space shuttles or even like even like the international space station right it's all like just pieced together and stuff like that it's like that's not aerodynamic at all right because there's no air in space you know what i mean um so it's like a lot of these things that we think of don't actually like matter that much but it looks like it matters you know what i'm saying so that's what I'm doing here, just cruising. And I'm just like using the opacity, using uh, various, uh, I guess, I don't know, like just, just sketch it, just having fun. You could do this with your non-dominant hand, doesn't really matter. For those of you that are new, you're probably like coming here like, man, this guy's trash, what is he? why am I here? <laughs> but you just gotta trust, this is, uh, this is this is funny like i think uh, i get this a lot where like when i start sketching like this it's like like if you if for anybody that has taken like a class of mine um i'll start i start like this like with the with a lot of like the loose sketches and like just the, the scribbles and stuff like that um i'll start like that and it looks disgusting it's just like what are you doing dude you know like you are paid to draw uh you, da you damn right i am but it's like i'll I'll just do these kind of random things for two reasons, right? Like the, the main reason being, um, I want people to understand how, I guess, how little of importance it really it really is to actually be able to, to draw well in the beginning, right? I think like there's this, uh, especially when, I, when I'm like working and stuff, you kind of see like a lot of like, like junior artists or even like people that are kind of working, working for me or with me or whatever. Um, when they submit a drawing it's the whole idea is like oh hey look how good i can draw you know what i mean it's like look how good this drawing is uh but like the ideas are always bad you know what i mean it's never like it's always like a, a, a just a, a very mediocre idea and like what we want to understand about concept art right is that it doesn't actually matter, especially in the beginning, how well your drawing or how good your drawing actually looks, right? Just because like, um, it we need ideas first, right? So this first initial section is always like really bad. It's always just, just like, just me just figuring things out, you know? So, but I've been talking a lot. How's everybody been? How's uh, How are the things? Seeing some familiar names in here. I'm actually seeing some new names in here too. I'm actually really excited about that. Hi, Kenny. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. What's up, dude? Uh, so uh, this is uh, just a sketch you are doing to try to find out uh, some cool shape. Can you? Uh, this ha has to do something with form language, or you're just trying to to find some cool shape for your design? Yeah. So, like I was saying earlier, uh, you, uh, if you if you showed up late, or for anybody that showed up late, um, this is gonna be this is more of a technique today, right? So I'm gonna be showing you why this is important tomorrow, not tomorrow. Sorry, next okay. week. Um, 
uh, on the on the schedule we start on the sixth i think i think that's what, what it was uh wait hold up i have it right here uh yeah no on the fifth sorry so on june 5th 2024 is when we're starting the first week usually i don't really have a lot of time to like kind of go into a lot of technique stuff whenever we are uh uh, doing the live streams. So this week, I'm actually just talking about technique, right? This is a technique that I'm going to be using to help uh, define my uh, my my forms next week, right? But this is purely a technique today, okay. and then uh, next week, we'll I'll show you how it ties into the actual form language side. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kenny, are you recording, and will and will you be recording? like you did before going forward yeah so today i am recording uh I'm, I'm recording locally just on my computer because um i can't stream right now uh but once my internet comes in which should be today you know praying um it will be like normal so we'll have uh <clears throat> everything will be on uh on my youtube just just like normal um but just for this week i'm recording it locally and then i'll upload it afterwards so okay yeah 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 for sure. Dude. <clears throat> this is kind of cool. I like this kind of blobby shape. Let's see. So what have I missed, people? I think I feel like I've been out, like, for... <laughs> I feel like I've been missing. I feel like the internet, like, there's a... There's an AI thing happening right now on Instagram that I, sh I should probably be aware of. <laughs> There's uh, all sorts of things going on. I feel like I'm so out of the loop right now. Everyone's getting denied the opt out of like Instagram AI stuff. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it is really, it's insane. Some places well, funny, don't even have the option. Before. So like, some, I guess... Oh, some state or other. Are they trying to use? So they're trying to uh, they're trying to use our images. Uh, the, the, just the, from what I was gathering from like the ten seconds I was on, um, they're trying to use uh, the our images on Instagram to like supply their AI model or whatever, and then we can't opt out of it. They, so yeah. So currently, there's been an option to opt opt out, but you have to like submit an application to opt out or something like that and then they've just been denying people like ability to opt out and then basically i think instagram announced that um that in the like they're trying to be like more transparent i guess because they're trying to you know do the right thing so they're basically saying that they're going to be using um like all the work for AI and I think that they're also taking away the option to opt out like it's they they're just like they're telling us that we won't be able to opt out <laughs> yeah That's basically odd. some That's countries the option's not available <laughs> to opt out and yeah it's pretty wild <laughs> Well, that's stuff. uh that's smart I, I i feel like that's not gonna go well <laughs> i feel like i feel like that's not gonna it's not gonna fly i think uh not allowing I, people yeah. to own their data is uh you know whether you're pro ai or not i think that's uh that's uh that's a uh, interesting interesting take <laughs> i just feel like all of these social media platforms have their business has thrived off of the model of people just wanting to use their platform and give them the free content that's needed to get more people on the platform right and so it feels kind of like it like it feels kind of like they already use you know everyone who wants to be on their platform to get more people to their platform and now they want to use people even more. And I mean, I agree with like, it, it feels like you can't own the things that you create anymore. And... Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, right? Cause I, you know, you see the, that kind of mentality in, especially like in the games and movie industry, right? I mean, just entertainment as a whole right now, you know, where it's like, we made these products that make these companies millions, right? Like, I mean, 
you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's you make these 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 products you. that like companies use and sell and then now they're like oh you know we're like trying to we're trying to fire everybody and it's like that's a really interesting decision <laughs> yeah that's a good way to put it very it's interesting like, yeah it's like hey here's a you know here's this title that made us um like you know millions of, of, of millions, dollars yeah. and then here's like oh let's get rid of the entire art team like well then how are you making it <laughs> yeah. like i mean you know you got to make I mean, a, another one right I still think about Hi Fi Rush like on a daily basis. That's got to be the most shameful display. You know, oh. like, ah, oh, we need more games like Hi Fi Rush. And then they shut down the studio that made it. Yeah, it, it, see, it's it's really weird right now. Like, I think, uh, especially for those that are like kind of, I guess, more in tune with like what's happening in industry. I, I think like, you know, animation is taking a huge hit right now. I think I think every day I'm I'm always hearing that somebody got let go from somewhere. Like, you hear about the big ones, right? Where it's like, oh, Microsoft let go of these people, or you know, uh, Pixar let go of like this amount or whatever. But like, I think the small studios are getting hit uh, hit just as much, if not more. Um, we just don't hear about it you know what i mean um like uh i think um i don't i don't know why uh obviously i can't i can't attribute it to the same reason but uh jeremy fence i think so you say his name uh his his whole art art team got let go uh on their pro i don't know if it's like because they were done or because of like uh cutbacks but you know what i mean like it's like you know how to there's all sorts of small studios. I don't, and that's not even, I wouldn't even say that's a small studio. It's probably like a mediumish studio uh, that, you know, these kind of things happen to. And it's really, uh, I don't know. It's really, it really sucks. It's really, it's a really uh, weird time right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I think something that I kind of worry about even more so than my artwork well because i mean like as an individual person like i don't feel like so personally targeted by ai i think that they really are going to be going after kind of like which is still incredibly sad but like the big people in the art realm and like the really popular styles um i think that is what they're trying to basically get AI to be able to do as well. Um, and so I think what's hard is like, it does feel very wrong, but um, I think something else that worries me because I think I heard somewhere that everything has already been data mined for AI, including our things like, well, like our Photoshop accounts. Um, I heard like Google Docs things like that like work works that you've kept in google docs or anything that has like a cloud-like um storage system that everything's already been basically fed into ai anything current i think for me too it's not just the art because i know it's like it's something so small but i also like to write and i will probably never publish like anything that i do one day but like the goal is to try to one day, but yeah. I think what's really difficult is that when our written work is also fed into AI, um, like AI isn't just replacing like artists, it's also replacing writing and they're trying to use it to write more stories. And so like that is something too that I feel like kind of makes me a little sad because I definitely like as an individual person and writer who so, so very slowly like would never be able to compete with the pace of a story being written in AI and so that's something that also made me kind of sad not just for myself but like for others I know a lot of people write things and they kept it previously in Google Docs and other stuff yeah I do I will say I think for for I think as an artist especially like uh, I don't know that I've kind of like left home right <laughs> Um, it's, it's interesting because, so I've, I've been traveling a little more this past couple months, obviously the move, but also I was traveling, uh, uh, a couple months leading into it too. Like I was in Mexico like twice. Um, I went back home to Texas and I even, you know, like getting 
getting in connection with people again outside of art, right? I think it's, uh, I don't say eye opening, but like it's very uh, weird, kind of seeing, I guess, um, what other people are th- what other other people think about AI, right? A big part of it, for example, like I think for us as as artists, right? It's usually a resounding no, right? It's it's either a resounding no or like a quiet yes, right? Because Let's be real. There's there's definitely artists, you know, whether whether you hear or not, I'm not saying like this is anti or pro AI for for anybody watching this now or later. Uh, but generally speaking, right, uh, you know, we're there. This isn't like like most people in in art work are kind of like against it, right? We're the, at the very least we're vocal about it. Um, but outside of art, that's where you get interesting that's where it gets like oh that's weird right because a lot of people are really getting into ai especially like i was we were ah, shit where were we at i think we were in mexico i think we were in uh i we were riding by this school and i think it was like i think it was a uh uh a technical school or like an artist school or something whatever it was we were we were just driving by and then there was these like uh on the fences there was these banners promoting the school, like one of those, like just big, like, you know, like huge banners. Right. And for like, I don't know, two or three blocks, there was like, you know, banners just the whole way down, uh, basically cover uh, surrounding the entire school. And all of it was AI art, all of it. Like you can just tell, you just have, you, you know, if, uh, you just, you know what it looks like, right? It's like that super kind of smooth skin, highly detailed everywhere, but kind of gets like almost as almost as if you put a like a, a median blur on it, right? Where everything kind of like the crisp edges start like kind of curving into each other, right? Um, and it it's and that's just that, that was like a, that's just an entire like just uh just banner just out there in in public and even like here in japan where i'll see uh i'll see like um uh just places where the there's some sort of advertisement for something right it's just like someone drinking coffee or something and yeah it's an ai thing as well and it's it's very uh it's it's I guess I don't say interesting, but it's 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 weird kind of seeing how the world is taking it because I think uh, as an industry, right, we're most of us know that it's at the very least not a hundred percent right. You know what I mean? Like whether you like it or not, you can't deny the fact that it's a little bit weird, right, right now for for artists. But I think like something that to understand is not everybody sees it that way, you know. Uh, and I would say I'd venture to say most people don't see it that way, right? Because I think with artists, especially entertainment designers, we're such a small industry uh, compared to you know other 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 places. And seeing how people are using it, right, and and just like normal <clears throat> day to day things, um, it kind of like I don't know uh, opens your eyes to, to to seeing like what some of these trends like actually are. Because as artists, right, we're always you know we're just indoors drawing and painting and you know it's we're kind of surrounding ourselves with our own industry right uh especially artists because that's kind of what we do right we generally speaking most artists kind of get into into their field right where they're like like you know you kind of want to start learning art so you start watching art youtube then your social media starts curving around that and then the people you surround yourself with are generally artists. And so all of our opinions are generally speaking the same. But then like, you know, one foot outside of that, you kind of start seeing like, oh, wow, like normal everyday people are just using it like crazy, you know. Um, and it's uh, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know how to feel about that. I'm just this is just things that I'm like observing as I'm uh, exiting the matrix. I don't know. <laughs> I met someone literally like a week ago that just graduated from college and with a degree in computer science but specifically like a specialized like specialized in ai learning and i was like how is that a thing already (laughs) yeah yeah, that's they literally have a degree in that so i thought that was really which is crazy because it's like 
I mean, I, yeah, I guess, you know, it's been around for a while. Like the research into it has been going on for a second. But like, I guess, you know, it didn't come into prominence to what, a year ago, right? A year and a half ago. Um, but yeah, and, but they, this one has a four year degree in it. So which is which, which is wild. <laughs> but I also I also um, like I I definitely have come across a lot of people who like seem to support AI as well. I think where you see that difference in the creative realm versus non-creative realms or just less creative realms is that I think right now it's more prominent that like AI is stealing the work from creatives to to teach its programs, its systems. And I know it's stealing more than that. I know they're working on AI for, I mean, like just uh like engineering things or or other stuff like that i just i don't know like how prominent it is in other fields as much as it is in the art realm and so that's why i think that there's a lot more artists who are or artists or writers who are against it or just creatives in general but yeah maybe because it feels like it it feels like it's hitting our field more it's more noticeable I'm not sure, but yeah, I've definitely met a lot of people or have come across a lot of people who seem to really like or support AI. It's it's hard. Yeah, and I, I will, <clears throat> I do, yeah. I do want to talk about this very specifically because I think as as designers, right? Um, there's this uh, uh, I want to say like purity with 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 art right where it's like you know it's it's the thing that we like doing it's you know um it's there's a uh there's the some of the there's a lot of legal questions and stuff like that with a lot of the uh the the ai art that's happening now but the reason i'm talking about this isn't because it's either we're pro ai or or against ai right but what i will i do want to say is i do feel like the industry is moving that way i think as a uh as a whole, but I don't think it's moving in the way that you're seeing it, right? Where like, um, as as a whole, right? When you see like somebody using AI in the sense that like they just type in a prompt, they're like, "Hey, give me uh, weird looking spaceships," right? Because that's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's like I don't. I don't think that's a thing. Uh, that's not going to pass in a in a normal setting because that's not how we operate. Just generally speaking, um, that kind of workflow is, I would say, lazy and uh, not a, not uh, not effective. Like that's a that's something that you will never be a concept artist for, right? Um, if you are you are extremely easy, easily replaceable, right? Just because, I mean, that, it was like that during photo bashing. It was like that. It's like that for 3D modeling. You know what I mean? Like if you are somebody that is lazy with your designs, which, you know, with, with better tools, right? Promotes laziness, right? Uh, because I remember when I first, not saying photo bashing and AI are the same thing, not saying modeling and AI are the same thing, but what I am saying is, when I was learning, when I first started, uh, there's the there is the idea where don't let the photo dictate what your drawing is going to be, right? Because you, you've probably heard me say that uh, uh, amongst other teachers. That's you know that's not that weird of a thing to say, um, because right, it's oftentimes if you put in a photo of like something right you sh that shouldn't change your thought right because you're using the photo to you know help you texture something to help inspire if you're kind of using it to like smudge around whatever right we're never like dropping in like a physical thing from like cutting out a thing and then dropping it in right like unless it's like uh like a call of duty thing where it's like that's you know a crate is a crate it's world war ii we need a world war ii crate right that's different but like when you're photo bashing and stuff like that generally speaking you know you have an idea and then you need to execute it it's not you put in a photo and then the ideas kind of come through right because that doesn't work it's the same thing with ai in the sense that you can't just type out a prompt and be like oh yeah i'm a designer now right look at me i'm freaking batting 100 every 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 concept here looks good it's like no all of them suck because they're 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 just it's just 
it's nothing. You, generally speaking, there's a problem, right? There's a there's an issue that we have to solve, where there's like there's things, you know. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear that on my mic. There's a air force base near me, I think, or they just like flying over my apartment. Anyway, <clears throat> generally speaking, right? There's there's issues that we need to solve. There's very specific parameters that we need to hit and so if you're lazy about it right um it's never going to work anyway but if you've seen the way ai handles like you know cleaning up renders or uh you know generating like little things here and there like photo fixes and various things like that um i can see that being a part of the industry whether we like it or not right i think it's something where it's like a for real concept artist generally speaking um, I could see that being adopted, right? I think a lot of the legal issues that we're seeing right now is 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 isn't really going to last that long, just because um, they're spe especially with the big companies like Disney, Blizzard, you know, all those places. Like they have database databases full of art. They don't need our art to do that. Um, so it's something where I think the a lot of the uh, legal issues will kind of be sorted out. Uh, for better or worse, whenever that happens, right? But I think, like, as artists, you do we do have to kind of understand where uh, some of these things are going, just because you know it's our industry, right? This is this is uh, this is how we make a living. This is what we like to do, and I think um, you know people just kind of need to be aware of that, right? Uh, especially like talking, like for for those that like know other artists, professional artists, and things like that. Um, like talk with them, ask them, and, and, and I mean, don't be so judgy about it, right? But you know, ask them, hey, do you do you use AI or like, what do you think about it? This and that, and I think you'll get you'll get answers that you're not expecting, <laughs> especially from ones that you trust, right? If 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 you don't, if they don't really trust you, they're not they're not gonna say anything, right? Because uh, you get shot for saying you use AI on things, right? Um, but right for the for in like the enclosed circles right um you know, generally speaking i'm i'm hearing a lot more i guess usage than than we're hearing online because you know it's it's not very popular to say that you use it right now you know what i'm saying because people uh aren't exactly happy with it <laughs> so i don't know just things it's um something that uh that we that I, I like to do or not you know that you, that you should be doing as 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 just designers in our field is like really like talk to people i think like the internet is such a bad place to get uh a a uh, uh i guess a, a a solid consensus on an idea just because it's so you know whatever whoever whoever's loudest wins essentially right um and it's you we have to because I think a lot oftentimes we'll kind of like put ourselves in these uh, these camps of like pro this or anti that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you see the entire industry shift and you're like, wait, I thought we were all against it. I thought we all hated this thing. And then turns out, you know, everyone was just doing it, you know, in the shadows, essentially. And then now it's cool to like it and then you'll start seeing it everywhere. Um, I just think it's like uh, it's less it's less one-sided than you might think. <laughs> um, I know that, I mean, I know that other everyone like kind of knows this, but like Disney's already using AI. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're even putting pressure now on their artists, like who currently work for Disney. And I only know this through my friend, like to not speak poorly of AI, basically. Like they even kind of, if I think like I'm sure some of them still do like in their own circles but like um like now you'll even hear I feel like you'll hear some like Disney artists talking about AI being a great tool yeah but I also feel like in a weird way like I feel like Disney specifically because they have kind of like more specific a more specific style would pull from their own database to train their AI. And I also know that Disney is working on their own AI program anyways. Yeah. I think that ultimately the thing that makes AI unethical right now is not necessarily that this is a thing that's possible. It's 
just how they're training AI and yeah. how they're taking um, our data. And, and it's not just like me specifically because, you know, my work isn't really worth that much, but like everyone's data and no one's getting paid for their work being used to train these systems that are going to continue to make big companies and corporations millions while they hire less and less people each year and i think that it's not even like if they if they had created this program and then over the course of the next 10 years hired like artists and writers and engineers and other people to create work to train ai like under you know and then and then fired everyone even though that would still be like wrong it would be more ethical because they they got the work they needed through people that they hired to train these programs but i think the biggest issue is that even though some of them are still kind of trying to do that they still data mined everything every cloud service that your stuff was in every social media and still took um, a lot of work that wasn't theirs to train these programs that only they can are capable of profiting from yeah and so theoretically you could use ai to try to stay up with the game you can try to use ai to profit so to speak by getting a job where you would have to use it and now you know how to use it but um yeah i think that you're right in that it's likely that that could be what's going to happen going forward yeah it's just a really weird time that we're in because it does feel unethical and wrong Yeah, I will. I will say, like, <clears throat> I think with uh, you're absolutely right about the uh, like not talking bad about AI. I think like with some companies, for example, um, I have heard at some companies uh, they will like before they hire you. For example, they're gonna comb through your social medias uh, to kind of see if you're pro or anti AI. They won't tell you this, right? But the reason for that is because they use AI. For example. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you how I know this, uh, but <laughs> you can assume how I know this. But um, there's there's companies out there that will like just kind of just see where you are at this because if you're like super anti AI, they're not gonna hire you just because they're using it, and uh, it basically it's just like kind of inviting a whistleblower into your uh, into your company essentially for them, right? Um, so it is something where it's it's very much like that right now for everybody like kind of wondering like yes the companies do that because it's very taboo to to be using ai but uh you know they're not but they still but they got to make the money you know what i mean like they still gotta they still gotta bring in the cash and so what, what they're doing is they just kind of watch out for those people you know um not saying you should or shouldn't do whatever, but it is something to understand that the industry is is moving around that currently, right? There's there's big uh, there's big hiring pushes for certain types of artists or certain types of things, and uh, you know we we have to just be aware of that. When you make a post, when you say anything about something, you know it's it is something to be aware of, right? that i did not know that um but i didn't i mean it makes sense that they would be looking on your social media for that because so many artists have been posting anti-ai AI posts um one of my favorite artists has been out of work for probably the longest that she's been out of work since the start of her career um and now that you say that i wonder <laughs> Because I've been really shocked by that, but now I wonder if it's because she's been very adamant in her of opposition to, very vocal in her opposition to AI. Yeah. That I don't know if that's a factor at all, but that is interesting. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying it is or isn't a factor. I'm, you know, it's there's a lot of different reasons, right, right now as as to why things aren't going the way they're supposed to be going. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of that where you know I think there's. Um, on top of the fa on top of other things happening, you know, um, like uh, cost cutting measures and various things like that, um, 
because I don't, I definitely don't think AI is the like the the conversation of like you know people uh, not being currently hired, right? Like a lot of people being laid off and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's a hundred percent AI. I don't, I don't even think it's mostly AI. Um, I think uh, there's something else happening. I think there's a different shift that's going on right now that uh, you know whether it's like uh, uh, the effects of um, uh, what was it, uh, COVID, where you know studios kind of ramped up like crazy to make to make content to be uh to kind of you know create during covid uh just because our industry like really i don't want to say boomed but like it 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 like it did really our industry was like pretty successful during during that phase and then turning out that you can't just hire a a, a million people and then you know uh, have shit products like people realize oh we still have to make good things and then they're letting go of a lot of people there's probably like a bit of that on top of you know a bunch of other things but um but yeah it's 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 a weird time you know and i think as as artists uh, especially like and I, I i tell people this all the time like there's things that i do like on um online that i don't recommend most people do <laughs> just as a as a as for everybody listening just a pro tip uh don't copy what other artists do uh not in an artist sense more of in like a, in a uh i guess i guess their social media presence sense <laughs> um cuz you know like if if you, if you know who I, if you know a little bit about me i don't have a i don't have a a uh, art station i'm not going to go into why but um, you know, I, yeah, there's things that I'm like, I don't recommend you do that. It's not, it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't make things easy for you. You know what I mean? So especially like posting AI, just, just, just wait out, you know, you can have your thoughts, you can have your things. Um, but just, you know, just wait and see what happens. I think, uh, I think you'd be surprised. Uh, cause I think the online consensus that I'm seeing is, it's the worst thing that has ever been put on this planet. And then when I actually talk to someone in real life, they're like, yeah, we use it all the time. And these are these aren't like random people that are like jobless at home. These are like art director, production designer level artists at very very reputable studios. Uh, and so I'm kind of like you know just wait and see. So. Hello. Yo yo, what's up? Oh, uh, can I ask a question about how? The class works or digital vegetables works, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's your what's your question? So, like you said, there was a topic every month, and like, can you give an example? You mentioned there's world building and there was form language one time. Can you give an example of like what else there there can possibly be, right? Ah, uh, I mean, okay. So I, I we'll, we'll run through the whole structure for anybody new here as well. I'm actually seeing a lot of new names, <clears throat> but uh, so. Generally speaking, right, every month we're going to have a new topic, right? So this month is uh, form language for world building. That's the, that's the singular topic. Uh, we're going to be covering that for four weeks. I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, different, um, uh, different um, I guess, steps and like kind of break down the process for, for, you know, artists of most levels. I think from generally speaking uh you kind of want to be intermediate to advanced level student to kind of be able to participate fully like you could do it as a beginner level student but you should probably be learning like more fundamental things but uh we're going to be covering um just a topic that's voted on every month right so i uh, i come up with uh, generally speaking uh four topics a month well it's like two plus the two that did best last last month or the one that did best last month and then the people in the live stream plus vote on what they want, right? So this month, or well, I guess uh, when when we did the vote in March, uh, they they voted on uh, form language and world building, like it it tied. So I just kind of combined them because those topics are pretty easy. I won't always combine it if there's a tie, uh, but the topic was easy enough to like combine into one thing. So, um, but yeah. So every uh, every week on uh, same time same time that we're doing it doing it today for wherever you're at, uh, but it's Wednesday 7 p.m. Pacific uh, Pacific time is kind of when when I'm aiming aiming for. Uh, we're just gonna do a live stream, and then whatever topic for that uh, that week is right, we'll we'll kind of do that. But it's the same topic. It, it's just a different part of the world building or form language for world building process essentially. Um, and if you want feedback, right? If you're somebody that like wants to take this as like a full on class. 
um, uh, I'm going to be uh, holding private live stream sessions for anybody in the live stream plus group. So if you're in the live stream plus group, uh, if you go to the shop in the discord, um, once it's live uh, after this session, uh, you'll be able to sign up for uh, the live stream plus group and then I do actual feedback on your work So if you if you do work for me like where it's like hey, this is the first assignment that you gave I'll give you feedback on that. Uh, it's recorded and everything just private uh, for everybody. That's part of the uh, the live stream plus group. So and uh, Yeah, we just uh, mostly it's like the first like hour ish maybe 30 ish minutes It's kind of talking about whatever it is that we need to talk about and then uh, Second half is uh, mostly like this, where we're just kind of chatting about what's relevant and, uh, I don't know, fun things like that. So, it's a help. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I wouldn't ask because I had to go, right? And I'm I'm looking forward to the feedback thing. I actually caught you from um, Brainstorm. So, you know, I chased you here, right? <laughs> and, oh, um, cool. Yeah, I'd like to hear a future, like classes stuff since i want to you know i'm a character artist well i want to be right but mm -hmm. i also want to like know how these people do like environment stuff so i'm trying to get like my basics then i can come here right to, like get another like a a level two version right? oh yeah yeah so uh yeah just keep an eye out for the uh the live stream plus uh, signups when that happens uh, it's, it's gonna be in like an hour ish from now uh, at least sometime today or my today. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you'll be able to sign up for that. Uh, I'll have more information for those people in, uh, there's a, there's a separate like group in the, in this discord for live stream plus people that's not public. Um, so you'll, you'll see that when it happens. Um, but yeah, just uh, keep an eye out for that. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. Real quick while we have this, uh, I guess opening, <clears throat> from our in-depth AI talk. So I kind of wanted to show you guys like how far we're getting here. Like I'm at, we're at 12, it's 12.04 for me, right? So that, it's been an hour since we started. Uh, <laughs> we still have another hour left, but like seeing, we have three different designs. Uh, and then like most of it was me doing the intro of like what we're doing. So that, I think that was like an extra 20 minutes there. And then, you know, Ren talking here and there. But like within, let's say, let's say 30 minutes, we have three and a half-ish designs, right? Really, really quickly. And a lot of these, if you just gave to your art director or you showed your, like, give it to a junior to finish it off or whatever, you know, these would get you pretty far. And, you know, just kind of breaking down the process real quick. All I did for those that were, you know, watching was this hard round brush with transparency it's the transparency for me that that's the biggest thing where it's like you can still kind of like it kind of creates more detail and then i'm like taking pieces flipping it transforming it stamping them around doing whatever uh and then i'm using a smudge tool as well so for those that uh, didn't i didn't cover this one <clears throat> this is a, a a smudge tool so if you go into uh, right under the paint bucket tool uh usually it's on the blur tool it's that drop but if you click and hold or shift n or shift whatever uh, you can click smudge, right? And it's the finger, right? And what it does is you can grab your image and like kind of drag the pixels around, right? It's it's smudging it like actual paint, for example. Um, what this is, this is a hard round brush that was just kind of flattened. I'll show you. Like, you know, the it's just, you know, it's just a normal round brush, right? Um, oh, don't do that. <clears throat> okay, this is... Don't, uh, don't make it too big because you get stuff like this. Um, but the strength is at 99. So it's just taking the pixels and like moving it. Uh, and what I like about that is when you do it, it can it allows you to kind of just like make some connections, right? Where it's like uh, extrude too. That's what it was. Uh, it just kind of like you can like make cut lines a little easier. You can like take some details and like kind of push it a little bit further, stuff like that. That way you don't have to actually paint it. And then using those two things, I'm just like going through the motions right i'm worried about <clears throat> the big shapes the uh the, the overall silhouettes and then areas of rest and areas of detail right so when i'm designing these ships for example right a lot of this is you know where's my detail gonna go oopsies uh control y command y there you go where's my detail gonna go and where's my areas of rest? Especially like because we're doing like ships here. So, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. 
uh, as to like why that's the way it is. But this works with buildings, this works with whatever. And so all I'm doing is just kind of, you know, just putting some strokes down and just seeing what happens, right? Because I trust that whatever I do by the end of this is probably going to look okay, right? Um, and that's what I'm doing. So pretty simple stuff. I'll explain how, like, how uh, I kind of use this in, I guess, conjunction with a reference board uh, coming up uh, next week, right? Uh, but for now, just kind of know that's how the technique's going, right? And you can actually see how fast this is. I'll show you uh, some really cool... Um, uh, I mean, I think it's cool. I don't know. Uh, really cool, like, tricks and stuff in the following weeks with this method. If you are somebody that's following, um, I guess, like, week by week with me, whether you show me or not, um, understand that the process that I'm doing here exists for a reason um what you want to do and this is i highly recommend this for everybody do it the exact way that i'm showing you because if you deviate from this in any kind of way uh if you're an advanced student or a professional do whatever you want you're a pro you got this uh if you're newer to this i would recommend doing it the way that i showed you because this will lead into something else that you're just not aware of in like next week's right this process that we're doing now is going to be relevant in probably i mean every week but mostly the fourth week right third and fourth week so just keep that in mind uh just understand that i do have other plans for these things my if you understand if you know me as a as a as a artists you know how efficient i can be with a lot of my uh rendering techniques and things like that uh, so just understand that um you can do it however you want, but just know that this isn't the last time you'll see this. So when you do follow this, try to follow it to the T because uh, you I don't want you to miss out on what I show you the next week. You know what I'm saying? So Sorry, my cat's being like crazy right now. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, it makes great ambience. <laughs> There's no background music today, so I guess I guess he's got us. Yeah, he's singing for us. Yeah, something like that. It's crazy because he's quiet all day, right? Like mm -hmm. both both cats, they're they're quiet generally speaking most days. You guys don't know this because they're always loud during stream, which is wild. But uh, generally speaking, they're pretty they're pretty quiet. It's like they know. You know, I think they it's know because. When you're streaming. I think because I'm talking and they're like, who the hell are you talking Aww. to? Because they like, because I'm saying things and they don't know what a live stream is. I, just, I don't think they know what it is. But, uh, you know. Uh, they make a lot of sense, yeah. My dad's talking, why can't I? <laughs> so guys, how's life? How's, uh, how are the things? I guess um, I've been, I've been... I've been gone for for two months. How's uh, how's the art journey? Anybody have any troubles? Any issues you're kind of running into? Smooth sailing. Honestly, I think recently for me, I've been I keep hitting a wall in like rendering efficiently. Ah. I feel like I just go in circles. That's a. Uh... I guess what do you but what are you doing so like okay because for me right whenever i'm doing rendering right the last mm -hmm. thing in my mind right is painted by hand <laughs> like the, the 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 absolute last resort is i guess i'll paint it you know what i mean and so when you're rendering right, right what's the what's the what's the thing what's the what are you doing because you could do this whether you're photo bashing, whether you're painting by hand, or whatever, right? The last thing you want to think about is like, hey, how am I finishing this? What's the process for that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I guess I just, so I do paint by hand. I have been trying to do photo bashing a bit to make things a bit easier. But I always just end up like, I don't know, concentrating too much 
on one area and really nitpicking at it over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that's yeah. tough. That's um, that's like, I think something that uh, a big. Oh, it's weird. Like I, it's kind of like this. I had this pendulum kind of moment or time, whenever I was first starting. Right. I when I first started, it was all about being like as loose as possible. Like who's who's got the juiciest paint strokes, right? Um, that's right. that was like that's the I don't know if it's still the thing with with I guess younger artists, but like. Not that I'm that old, but <clears throat> like a lot of it's like, how loose can you be? And so that's what we were doing. And then uh, at work, um, I don't want to say I got yelled at, but you know, I got, it was, it wasn't a great day that day when, when I needed to, to do a full on painting and it was just like the loosest thing you'd ever seen. And he's like, you know, this is like supposed to be a, in, like an informative painting for a modeler. Right. And I was like, oh shit. And so. I made a shift there and I started painting like super tight. And so everything was like, it took forever because you'd go in, yeah. you know, you, you do the 700% zoom and then you're just basically combing through every single section. You know what I mean? And that is right. equally, that was equally bad because it was just like, well, you're not getting anything, anything done at this point. So a big thing that I was doing that I, that I, I talk about a lot in like streams and things like that is find your focal points, right? Find the find the spots that people are gonna look at, and then find the spots that are closest to camera. Right, this way, when mm. people look at your painting, they're just like, "Oh, hey, this looks done." Right, because you know, there's sometimes a painting will kind of look done, but in your mind, you're like, "Oh no, it's not done yet. I still have like all these other places." Right, but what about mm. it is is like making it feel finished? It's usually it's usually because you kind of hit the main points. And our brains kind of fill in the rest, right? And so, right, right. Whenever I'm working, especially for like uh, like high higher level paintings where it needs to be you know more finished than like usual, oftentimes uh, I will just do the focal point and then the foreground, and then the rest of the time I have, I'll spend on like actually you know making the rest of the painting look better. But if I run at a time, if I'm like done, deadlines do whatever. Um, I can turn it in comfortably knowing that, oh yeah, the, it's, it looks, at the very least it feels complete. You know what I mean? Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess I should play a bit more with kind of honing in on those focal points because I, I was initially pretty similar where my style was very like loose and more illustrative, I guess, but lately I've been trying to kind of hone in more on like rendering cleaner and i think i'm getting a bit too caught up in that yeah it's it's a it's a balancing act because everybody's a little bit different and you, you kind of need to like find that for yourself like you know because some artists right they're like you know it's photo reel or bust like it's basically a matte painting or or it's not done mm -hmm. and then some artists it's like maybe you can identify like one thing and then the rest is smudges right that's not good either it's like you know you got to be in the middle of that um so finding that balance because you're gonna do one painting where it's like mm. oh wow yeah this one this one's super loose cool let's move into super tight and then next time do a little bit tighter than the loose one and then you're gonna kind of like find that pendulum of like moving back and forth until you get to you know whatever equilibrium that you find yourself in you know I just wanted to say that I also like I just I also have found myself really struggling with rendering or or pushing my boundaries of rendering and trying new things <laughs> has been happening. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I think for it was it's funny cuz I think uh so for me uh where's my internet at? Where's my thingy? Oh, Emma, we can hear you drawing, I think. Oh. <laughs> my bad. No, it's cool. All right, let's see. Where's my thing is? Uh... It's funny, because even looking back at this now, like, it's not even that good of a painting. But um, this, is where I, this is where I kind of, like, my first real personal rendering. I think I still have it up. 
Not first, but one of the better ones. Do I not have it? Where the hell is it? That's what happens when you don't have your art station. Hmm. Oh, here it is. It's the first one. What's wrong with me? So, <clears throat> I uh, I made this. I did this image. This I got. Um, oh, let me show you. Let me let me break down the 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 his the, the timeline of this. See how slow my internet is. It's not even loading. Or this is bad website stuff. Anyway, all right. Uh, here you go. Okay, so I did. Where the hell is it? This painting right here, right? It's not even that good. This is this is years ago. Uh, forgive me for my. Uh, not the bottom half. That's not mine. That's that's what the client gave us. The the castle part. That's mine. So, I did this castle right for uh, for a client, and this took me like four weeks. Like I could do this now in like a day, which is crazy. But like before, like it was painful, and it's not even like that good. You know what I mean? Like. And it sucked because, so I turned it in, like, this is, like, version, like, freaking 20 or so, whatever the hell it was. Um, and, like, I turned it in the first time, and he and my, my boss was like, dude, did you even count the amount of spikes that are, like, on the side here of these things? I'm like, no, I just kind of did it. You know what I mean? Like, and I just, like, all this, like, all the spikes were, like, different numbered and like nothing was consistent because I was painting it by hand, right? I just went in there and I was like, I just got to paint because I had this, I, we did this drawing. Um, yeah, this was the drawing they got approved, right? Um, which is still shitty, but anyway, <laughs> this is years ago, forgive me. But uh, yeah, like this is what got approved and I started painting and things didn't just didn't look good when I started getting, getting into the painting. And then like... Uh, my boss sat me down and he was like, Hey, like this, like, are you painting this by hand? What are you doing? And he's like, just paint one piece and stamp it around. Right. Because it's architecture. It needs to be, you know, the arch is going to be the arch, whether it's over here or over here. Right. Um, and so, and this is like in a pretty extreme angle, but the, the point is, right. I started learning how to like, you know, use my assets effectively where it's like you paint it once you stamp it around and you, you know like obviously some of these things you have to actually like do where it's like it's a different angle or whatever but most of it is actually pretty similar especially like some of these things the ground texture right you don't have to paint that by hand um you know a lot of the stuff can be you know and this is like uh, not even passable in my eyes now but from there right this one, so this took me like three weeks, four weeks of like pain and misery. Like I was like stressed out. I was working the entire time, uh, like all day. I even took it home a couple times and worked on it even longer. Like it, it was painful to say the least. This one took me like a week and it was smooth, right? And like because I did it, I, I learned how to like – take the shapes, take this and stamp things around and use it more effectively. I just had to build a couple specific pieces and then everything was set. And, you know, I mean, whether it's easy or not, you know, the, the, I guess a dome is maybe easier than a spire. I don't know. Uh, but the point is, right, I kind of got a little bit faster at it. And then this is kind of when, like for my work, I started getting quicker, right? Because I started painting less. And then from here, this was the personal piece that I was working on during that time. Right. So I was taking that understanding and I started, you know, using it for photo bashing and, you know, the painting's not even that good anymore. But like the whole point is like the I guess that that pendulum swing of like things are like super loose and then now they're like super tight. And now everything's in detail, which, you know, uh, like I was saying before, is probably a little too tight and too like stiff for me now. Right. Um, and you kind of just find that balance. But like these two paintings really because i think once i once i got the hang of that this painting actually moved by pretty quickly um yeah this painting uh moved by pretty quick but it's just something where like the pieces kind of started falling into place and it, and everything started like kind of working a little bit nicer and this was like i don't know two months worth of work right um this was like a personal project that i was doing at home and then this was like stuff i was actually doing at work so 
but uh yeah it's it's really like it's it's finding that technique for yourself and understanding kind of when and where to do things um because the last thing i do for everyone that's seen me paint i never i will you will not catch me alive paying something more than once because fuck that it just takes too long man you know <laughs> it uh i have things to do with cats to cats to feed you know what i mean so Oh well, yeah. So I hope that helps. Oh, I did have some news. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, at Lightbox this year for everybody that's uh, that's trying to be there. <laughs> um, I do have a table, so um, uh, that's gonna be. I'm gonna kind of a. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be doing some things for uh, for the digital vegetable kind of group thing. Um, Last uh, last year we did a uh, we kind of like um, I want to say rented out some tables but we just took over an alley basically and then uh, we kind of just hung out um, I'm probably gonna do, be doing something very similar this year um, so just kind of keep an eye out for that so if you do want to come it's uh, it's a good time so oh Ian so um well what'd you say Audrey. I thought you were paused for a sec, so I was just going to say I have to leave really quick, but I'll watch the recording if you post it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll post it uh, I'll post it as soon as I can. Um, <clears throat> internet for me is kind of slow, so uh, yeah. Go ahead. No worries. I also saw your Lightbox announcement, announcement, and I'm still deciding whether or not to go, but I definitely would love to go and see you and everyone there. So. Nice. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Later. <clears throat> oh. So Ian, uh, what I'm doing here is uh, just doing some like loose silhouettes <clears throat> and ideation. Um, basically, uh, just kind of like making forms, right? So the the actual like world building uh, section is going to be next week because this is kind of like a warm up slash just kind of like catch up week, right? Uh, just kind of see how everybody's doing, so on and so forth. <clears throat> but uh, we're just taking uh, like a hard round brush, uh, setting transparency to like 40%. And then I'm just uh, making shapes. So um, I just, it's mostly about showing technique, right? Where it's like, this is how I come up with ideas. Within the last hour, we have like four decently unique sh ships. I mean, they're they're kind of cool. I don't know, I don't know which, which ones you guys like more, but uh, I kind of like where they're going. And then, um, you know, this is kind of how I'm going to approach next week's assignment. Because usually I kind of run out of time and I'm not able to fully show the technique as uh effectively as i want uh so i'm just kind of using today as more of an announcement catch up um soft entry for anybody like wanting to kind of participate in the live stream plus stuff so but yeah that's what uh, that's what we're up to um, kenny i have uh, one question yo what's up uh so uh to to improve in um in uh, composition, usually we, we do study from frame, from movie. But uh -huh. if we want to do some exercise uh, about uh, design or form, form language, what kind of exercise uh, we need to do to, to be better in, in, in that? Yeah, good question. So, yeah, it's, it's like oftentimes, like it's really easy to get good at... Uh, at uh not i don't say easy but it's pretty simple to get good at quality stuff right you want to get better at painting do more paintings you want to get better at drawing draw more usually from reference right form language is a design muscle right like because there's uh there's two different sides to entertainment design there's the illustration aspect right where we learn how to draw and paint and you need to get good at drawing and painting to be effective right and then there's the design side, combining ideas, originality, understanding those things. So um, whenever you're working on form language, what you want to do is you need to do it more. There's no silver bullet trick. There's no, um, you know what I mean? It's literally, you just have to keep going, right? Uh, what I did whenever I first started was... Um, we would like me and a couple friends we'd sit down like we were at school uh and we just have like a form language pulled up in front of us whether it's on the screen or whatever 
like broccoli, it could be a car, it could be whatever. And you have to make something out of it, right? Um, and so like, let's say you took, like in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking um, like fish, fish and spaceships. Reason for that <clears throat> in my mentorship that I'm doing right now with some students, actually a couple of mentorships, we're actually doing some form language stuff. So this is an extension of that. You wouldn't know that if I didn't tell you that, but um, basically I'm just combining, combining two different things, right? It's like fish, like coral reef fish, and then uh, spaceships, like, like NASA spaceships, right? And just making something that, you know, kind of has this, a similar idea to that. And so when you're working on getting better at form language, you're not, maybe not even just you for anybody, right? What I'd highly recommend doing is uh, find a reference, let's say bones, right? Like um, grab like skulls or something, a picture, right? And then make a vehicle out of it make a building out of it, make a car out of it, something. Take the take that keyword of, of, of whatever reference you're using, combine it with something else. One plus one equals your design, right? Um, I kind of equate this to, um, this is a long ass answer, but I mean, that, that's, you should be expecting that if, if you guys watch, watch my stuff. <laughs> uh, koi fish kite. <clears throat> So this is a good example of kind of like what that means, right? Um, yeah, it's just a koi fish kite, right? Uh, say koi fish, koi fish, koi fish. There you go. Right? Koi fish? You know, you know what those are, right? Those are, this is a version of carp and then a kite. Right? What they did was, I mean, you know, in a design sense, right? They did... This kite plus this fish, right, equals this kite fish, right? And so that's the kind of idea that's happening here. You're, you're, you're taking two different forms, you're combining them, and you're making something. And you need to do that over and over and over. And you want to do it multiple times each time. For example, right, like right now, you can kind of see how they took the pieces where they're like, okay, they took the main shape of the fish, and they took the patterns of the fish, but then they took the pieces of the kite. So it's like, it's a material, it's a, it's thin, you know what I'm saying? It's simpler, it's a more primitive shape. And so they made this version. What if you did it again? What if you, what if you, you, you re put it back into the blender and then like you redesign, like you pulled a different form language from the koi fish right maybe instead of the fish aspect it's just scales so it's a kite that's made up of like pieces of smaller kite right where it's like they cut up triangles or whatever they st stitched them all together so it looks like scales for example i don't know uh, but the whole point is you can kind of remix that idea over and over again right and that's what form language is really about it's pulling certain ideas from your references and combining them in a seamless way you can't really separate the ideas anymore because if you if you pull out the fish idea it's no longer the same thing you know it's 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 a better mix and that's kind of what you're doing uh, and we did this a lot we had a whole class on this uh at brainstorm uh whenever i was there not my class i was i was in the class uh and uh, basically every week, it was two week increments, uh, there's, there's things and basically one week was like ideation, the next week was like finalizing that idea. And we just kind of do that and, and the teacher would pick a form language for us each time. I think the first one was like bones, the next one was like succulents, like the plant. And then another one was like something else. And it, we just kind of did that for like 10 weeks. It was. Uh, and we, we just kept me and a couple of students just kept kind of doing that as uh, as we were kind of learning and stuff. I mean, we stopped after a while, but, you know, how many how many a day you did about those sketches, those study of the uh, form language? You know, I mean, we did it like, I don't know, like we didn't do that much. We did it like once every week. Uh, maybe twice, right? So like maybe two or three designs, not much. It's the reason I want to, the reason I want to tell you this, the reason I want to say it that way is because there's this idea where it's like, do it a million times and you'll, you'll get it. It's like, yeah, I mean, technically you might, uh, but you don't need to do it a million times once you need to do it frequently or you need to do it often for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't brush your teeth oh, yeah. for an hour 
uh, once a year. You know what I mean? Like this is, that doesn't work. Uh, but you have to do it two minutes a day, every day or twice a day. Right. Um, and form language is the same thing. You have to you, like, it was kind of like a, a, a back burner type thing. You know what I mean? Um, like it's, it's something that I, we just did as a warm up every once in a while. And then we move on to whatever topic we were doing. Um, and we just kind of like, just kept doing it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I would do it once or twice a mm-hmm. week. Maybe come up with a page, right? And like a page could be like three because this fills up a page, right? It could be one big one. I don't know, right? Uh, but the whole point is do it. Do it often. And then the next time you do it, try to change it, right? Because if I took, uh, if I did this assignment again, like these these sketches that I'm currently doing, if I did this, maybe the next time I do it, I'll, I'll remix it more into the spaceship idea and less of the fish. Because these kind of feel like fish more than spaceship. It's like kind of halfway, but it's like 60-40, right? But maybe I want a 80-10, 80% spacecraft or, you know, NASA, and then like 20% fish, right? What does that look like? And then it's, it's learning how to control it is kind of where you get really good at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, you're perfect, man. Uh, Shadow asks, hey, Kenny, I'm, I'm new here. I'm new to exploring form language. Would you recommend signing up to Livestream Plus to someone who started recently, or would you say to practice more to sign up? Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'll answer this two ways, right? Answer this for the general public, and then you can kind of derive your answer from that. And I'll also answer specifically for you. Generally speaking, right, I do not recommend signing up for my my stuff if you're kind of like in the beginner zone, right? If you've just started and you have about a year of experience, um, just listening to the live stream is probably going to be enough because what I want people to understand is like these conversations we're having right now where it's like, we're just talking, right? That's free. You'll, you'll get that regardless, right? Cause that's, that's recorded. That'll be on the YouTube. Just watch it. It's, it's like two hours, but you know, if, uh, if two hours stops you from hearing this, you probably didn't want it that much. Right. But anyway, um, it's <clears throat> like the, the, the advice section and random talking that's free <clears throat> for those that are participating in the feedback sessions. Um, I'm not barring any beginners from, from joining. You can join and you'll definitely learn something. You absolutely will. You won't get as much out of, uh, out of it because I don't really cover foundational ideas that often, right? A lot of the stuff that I talk about is higher level thinking, more advanced understanding of things. Um, you know, we break down why we do things, not just how to do things. That's why like this week is actually kind of weird that I'm like slowly walking you through a process because, uh, I don't usually do that <clears throat> because there's plenty of other YouTube channels to kind of cover the, that information. What I want to talk about is what make what's the difference between a student and a professional, right? That level of thinking that's involved when it comes to, uh, you know, doing designs and things like that. So that's kind of what that's what the live stream plus is about. Um, so the better you are, the more you get out of the sessions, right? Um, so I usually recommend intermediate level students to advanced, even like early professionals, uh, just because um, it it makes things a bit uh, easier because you are you won't feel like you're drowning, essentially. I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say drowning, but like, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be a, a, le- a lot less uh, stressful uh, if you are somebody that's a little, that's, that's more comfortable in your foundation ideas, uh, but you're just kind of struggling with like how to, how to, th- think through some of, uh, some of the things, you know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> for you specifically, if you are new, right. Um, you know, for one, first and foremost, it is just $10. So if you're, if you are kind of like hesitant about it, it's not that expensive. Uh, I mean, I guess expensive is relative, but it is on the cheaper side of information. So it's not that bad and you can cancel anytime you want. Um, but, uh, if you do feel like you're a little new, what I would highly recommend everybody do before you kind of like sign up for like uh, like some of my sessions is just get good 
at being able to draw whatever you want and whatever and paint whatever you want right you don't have to be good at it but you do have to be just enough to where it's like you're not really struggling with your foundations where it's like i tried to make this work but my drawing skills couldn't keep up right <clears throat> if you ever see that happening uh that's kind of where i'm like you know you should probably uh, dial it back and take somebody that's a little bit more um a little more uh uh i guess foundational or at least focus on those you can like listen to listen to this stuff which is always good uh listening to the streams and stuff is is usually what i recommend um but you know that's uh i'll leave that i'll, I'll let you decide on kind of where you're at if you want to send me your portfolio and just if you want to like a direct answer of like i think you'd be qualified for this or not uh just send it over um just send it to me privately if you don't want to or if you want to just put it in the live stream uh general group and just tag me I'll, i can see it there too um but yeah so i hope that helps <clears throat> I definitely don't want this to be a uh, a thing where people like sent me money essentially, and they're like, "But I just didn't understand what the hell he was talking about." That's the, that's the worst possible scenario because you know it's not it's not exactly about the income essentially. You know what I'm saying? For those that don't know, like it's just it, it's it's ten dollars, so it's not really that much. It's mostly a barrier for those that just give me random homework for like other classes which i was getting a lot in the beginning <clears throat> so it's 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 really a filter than it is a monetary gain so just kind of as a general understanding so Whoop. sorry i don't want to pull this up in stream <laughs> you just sent me the link i guess you're okay with people seeing it oh you'll be fine let's see hold up yeah uh well that's the one you sent me let's see the rest <laughs> oh that's that's the only one okay yeah you'll be okay no you're fine if, you, if you'd like to join like you could definitely get a lot out of it um it doesn't look like quality is is an issue well i mean but this is 3d though so you know there's there's a uh from your sketches you look it looks like you'll be okay but i, I would definitely need to see more but uh yeah you'll be fine <laughs> Oh, that's the, <clears throat> uh, you said, uh, you're saying you struggle, you struggled a lot. It took, took you a while, struggled a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, but the good news is, right, once you do it once, like I was saying with this, for example, or right, this stuff, it's like you do it once, the next time you'll be a lot faster, right? And then you're, you're kind of like less worried about a lot of the technicals that you ran into the first time. And then you'll be able to like just kind of do it again. But now your thinking is less occupied by if your perspective is correct or not. You know what I mean? So. <clears throat> cool. Any questions, guys? We're, uh, we, got the low, we got like 20 minutes left. So if anybody has any cool topics, not so cool topics you guys want to talk about. <laughs> there's like 10 people here guys i can talk i can i can definitely keep going but uh i do want to open up the floor for any uh, anybody that's like going i have a question yo yo what's up just just to make some noise so <laughs> what's uh, the main uh, difference between uh, uh, making a portfolio about concept art for game and for animation or moving in general hmm hmm yeah so okay uh, and uh, and uh, another thing it's uh, if uh, uh, we are junior concept artists if it's better to focus in uh, some kind of concept because uh, example, uh, if people hire people like you, you you're not gonna go to do like, I don't know, props and stuff like that. But as a junior, it's better to, to, to make a portfolio with a lot of props to have more chance to, to get in the game industry. What's your opinion? Hmm, good questions. So, okay, first thing, right? What's the difference? Um, to be honest, there's not a huge difference, right? The biggest thing I would definitely say would be like style, right? In the sense that like, um, it's the look 
in feel of the thing. If you have photo real things, generally speaking, animation just doesn't do that, right? Um, mainly just because that's it's just like the the the, the way they work essentially. So. It's not like right or wrong, but if you do want to work in animation, you know, stylized things tend to do better, right? Just because most animation studios tend to do that. That's becoming less and less of a thing. Uh, photoreal, I don't think it's ever going to be a thing um, for, for animation just because, um, you know, if you're working photoreal, you probably just work in film. Um, so, you know, that's, that's that. But uh, for like... That boundary, though, is starting to, to is starting to crumble more and more as the years kind of go on. So, for example, right, like because stylized work used to be just like animation, right? We're like, oh yeah, you know, like, if you wanted to work stylized, you go work in animation, right? But nowadays, you can work in games like League and uh, League of Legends and and Blizzard and stuff. Generally speaking, pretty stylized, other than like you know Diablo and stuff. But even then, it's still kind of stylized. Um, <clears throat> and so like you kind of see that line blurring and then there's uh you know like uh movies and things that are starting to be a little more stylized in some instances right um so it's it's changing but the biggest thing i would say is definitely like whatever style you're working in it kind of dictates where you kind of go right so if you want to work in games uh, you have to be specific about what games you want to work for. Because if you want to work for Naughty Dog, right, uh, doing Last of Us type things or Call of Duty, right, Photo Real 3D is the way to go because that's what they do. You have to work like them essentially, right? Uh, but if you want to work in like a stylized game, you can you can have a stylized portfolio, you know? It just depends on kind of what studio you want to go for. Um mm -hmm. The next thing I would say after that, after style, right? Because that's that I, I think that would be the biggest thing, would be uh, the types of things that you're showing. So, for example, when you work in games, right? Uh, especially places like uh, like Sony Santa Monica, for example, they're really into like, oh, how does uh, how does that puzzle mechanic work, or how does you know what I mean? Like really figuring out function and like having everything like make sense, right? Um, generally speaking for games and things you have to figure those things out a little bit more because usually a player will interact with it and like something will happen there's a puzzle mechanic they need to do so there's a there's a physical interaction that happens with the prop in in film and animation sorry film and animation it's not that function doesn't matter. It just matters a little bit less because sometimes you'll just see it on screen. You won't actually see it move. You won't actually like see it do something. Does that make sense? So it's not so like critical that you get every single function of this thing correct. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's like, that's a big thing about games is you really have to kind of know how it looks from all different angles and how the thing properly functions because you know that's what they that's what they do um for animation specifically uh if you want a animation portfolio right what i would highly focus on is story right animation as a whole doesn't give a shit about story or about design, sorry. Not that they don't care, but generally speaking, design is very secondary in animation, right? Like, when's the last time you saw uh, something in, in animation that was, like, truly, like, the most unique design you've ever seen? Generally speaking, they don't really do that. Um, it's mostly about the story, right? It's, like, the mood, the feeling, the lighting, the understanding of the, of the design as a whole on an emotional level, rather than... I guess the uh, the physical like form language and buttons and interaction points and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it sounds kind of weird, but that's you know generally speaking, like especially with animation where uh, a lot of the projects are like just modern day normal things. You know what I mean? Like some aren't for sure, right? But like a lot of it really is like oh yeah, it's it's just like modern day or like like for example, we were on Blue Eye Samurai, right? There's not a lot of design happening on that project. Yeah, we are designing things. But we're just looking at like old references from, you know, Edo period things and just including it, right? It's like almost one for one. And so it's like the design skill isn't there, but 
the way the the kind of emotional response we get out of some of these props right that's what we're talking about so for example <clears throat> this is a really good uh um so like i really like this like this example because if you check this out this is design this is like a, a big thing in animation design right when you see this fish it's it's, it's kind of hilarious but Let's hold up. Uh, boom, boom, boom. All right. So we're looking at, oopsies. <clears throat> we're looking at design of like the, the blue tang fish, right? And generally speaking, that's, yeah, that's a blue tang, right? Hold on. Let's, let's pull up a real one. Is that, that's what it is, right? Blue tang? Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> like it's not that, uh, it's not that off. It's not that different, right? uh i'll put you down here right it's basically the same other than some forms right the pattern is almost exact right there's even that like hole there right it's just the shape is kind of elongated and like transformed right versus like this one's like you know a pill shape which is kind of boring right functional but boring and so there's personality in this fish design right so they're really creating an emotional response they're 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 designing this to feel like a certain character, right? And then they'll move some of these design cues, right? Like this, for example. This is her dad, right? And you know, like dads have that kind of like receding hairline, right? It's a receding hairline on a fish, right? So the personality trait feels like a middle-aged dad or just an older dad that's kind of, you know, hairline receding because so that's they, the They idea. are doing they are doing a little bit like form language they are uh, copying from the actor a little bit and they're putting it in the design of the fish mm -hmm. exactly like yeah it's creating like a, a personality it's telling a story of like who this character is so on and so forth right and so like the the design thinking is a little bit different it all falls in the sense of design we should always be thinking about all of it but this level of design versus like Star Wars, for example, or even like things like in God of War, it's not that these don't happen that often. It's just that the focus is a little bit less on the story driven emotional impact. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's it's not a huge deal, right? Like because, you know, for example, like my portfolio has a mix of games, has a mix of movies, has a mix of animation. And I get jobs in all three categories. I got my first animation job with a game portfolio. It's not that it doesn't happen um, because it's mostly about can you work in the style that we're requesting that you work in, right? Can you work in a stylized approach? Because if you can, perfect. But if you can't, it's not that it's not that you're bad or anything. It's just that, uh, you know, you're you're just not a fit for that project. Not really yet. And of oh. course, it's going to be like, how can I like, power up? Give me one second. There you go. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, but does that make sense? Yeah. Cool, cool. Sorry, that was a long ass answer. But, you know, that's uh, I mean, this is what I do. <laughs> Cool. Any other questions? We got ten minutes left, guys. Let's uh, let's end on a bang. Oh, that's kind of cool. What's that? Looks like a skull. Boom shaka. But yeah, like a big reason that I like uh, that I, I, I like to talk about these things, especially in like the depth that we're, I'm kind of going with it, right? Because, you know, it's a little, it's, a lot of these answers can actually be pretty simple where it's like, oh, hey, yeah, it's just, just do that, you know? But what I, what I, a big thing that I want everyone to kind of know as I'm answering these questions really is why, right? Because you can get an answer for a thing, but if you don't know why I said it that way, or if you don't know why I said a certain thing, um, you can it can kind of lead you to the wrong conclusions right where it's like you know uh oh yeah he said just work stylized or oh he just said work like this or that you know 
Uh, and it can be very misleading oftentimes. So, you know, if my answers get kind of long and stuff, uh, that's usually why. I'm just afraid of leading you the wrong way. <laughs> so. Dang, no other questions? We got 10 minutes, guys. There's so much time. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like, uh, something that... So, during this process, right? Something I really want everyone to, like, take to heart, right? Is, like, the phrase, Oh, that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Uh, that, for me, is, like one of the biggest things that you can ever learn to do whenever you're working, right? Um, and it's so simple. It's so like, it's such a basic idea, right? But it's so, it's, it's so powerful. It's so strong because whenever we're working, right? You need to find this interesting because if you don't, if you don't find the design interesting, there is no way in hell anybody else finds your design interesting, right? Just because, I mean, you don't even like it. You know what I mean? It's like you're its parent and you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but it's like, you know, if you're not in, if you're not into it, no one else is going to be either, right? So like find references that that you enjoy, create shapes that you like because, you know, chances are um you know, the things that you like, a lot of other people like, you know, uh, same with like your hobbies, same with your interests. So when you're designing, when you're doing anything, uh, try to incorporate things that you know, things that you do, because, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be the difference, right? You you ever hear that, like that idea of like, oh yeah, they just, they just have it. They just, they just, they, there's something about that artist, the way they think, the way they do whatever, right? It's usually because they just do what they want to do, right? They just make something that's kind of interesting. And like, you want to kind of tap into that because especially like in school nowadays, um, or I guess just in general, there's this, this push to always do, I guess, what is popular, right? What is like common. Um, but the, the really, for me, the biggest thing is like, just do what's interesting to you. And if you find it interesting, right? If you, if you, create a design that's like, oh, that's, that's kind of interesting. You know, like if you just like involuntarily say stuff like that, uh, while you work it, oh, it's everything, you know, it's, uh, it's like the way that, you know, just, just the easiest way to come up with cool ideas, right? You're just scribbling around and then it, it cause for me, it just like tells me to pursue that idea just a little bit further, you know? I'm just like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's continue with that versus like scrap it, you know? Uh, but you got to like get that reaction first. Sounds kind of weird and kind of hippie, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Let's see. See, it's like, it's, it was kind of cool. And then now it's like turning into like this weird box thing. And like, it's, it's fun because everybody is seeing something a little bit different every time right it's just like maybe like with a lot like maybe not with these so much maybe maybe this one but with these like everybody's seeing something just a little bit different and i bet you what happens is like during the design process right everybody was like seeing something and then i went like a different direction right it's just like oh i just kind of went this way i just kind of did that you know and like oh i didn't see that you know or whatever and that's the beauty of this ideation process where it's like we're just kind of seeing things in the clouds right and then we're just making something happen and it's so simple it's the the most basic tools you don't really have to worry about what brushes you have you don't have to worry about any of that you're just scribbling along and then you make something that is kind of cool you know because what we can do after this is use our fundamentals use our design understanding use our stronger kind of uh you know just things that we know as as artists uh to make this look good right because right now the most important thing is does it look interesting right does this spark interest is this does this make somebody wonder right um i had an art director a couple years back 
And it was like so simple that it was like baffling. You know, it, it was like mind blowing how simple that actually was. We're, we're designing for a game. And then I made a design of a ship. And then he goes, do you want to play in that ship? You know what I mean? Like what kind of, he's like, what kind of ship do you normally play with? Like, you know, when you pick up, when you, when you're playing a game, right. And you design a ship, do you pick that one? You know what I mean? Like which, which one out of, out of this bunch is like the one that you'd go for. And I go, Oh, me personally. Oh, I like, the, like, I like these, right. I like, I like this, whatever, right. Whatever it is. Same thing with like weapons, right. It's like when you play a game and like, like think like, uh, Think like like World of Warcraft type games where you actually get to pick whatever weapon you want, you know, uh, versus like, you know, the loadout that some games will give you. And like, do you pick like the big heavy sword that like cleaves through like enemies in like one hit? Or do you pick like the rapier that's a little faster? Do you pick like the dagger, it's a little smaller, but more nimble. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things like that where it's like everybody's play style is a little bit different. And so when you design... You want to think about like, you know, who's playing with this thing? Who's who's choosing this thing? And is this even something that you would want to play with? You know, um, and I think like once I understood that it, it, it's it sounds so dumb, like on like on on when I'm repeating it back to you now, you know, but at the time, because we're so we get so into our heads of like, oh, is this? Is this hitting like the right design ideas? Is my reference being represented correctly? Is is this happening? Is that, ha you know what I mean? We're getting so into all that stuff when at the end of the day, all that really matters is, is somebody going to play this game? Is somebody going to pick this item? Does someone like that character, you know? Uh, because that's all that really matters, right? Is this product something that is interesting enough for the audience to pick, right? And if you can get that, Oh, dude, you're like so deep into success at that point, right? Because you're just everything is working out, right? If if the designs and everything are are uh, are, are something that somebody would like choose, you're you're so close. All you got to do now is just make it happen. You know, all you got to do now is just take the design and like finish it. You know what I mean? Let's see. Boom. Yeah, let's take that piece. Get rid of that. Oops. Not that. One. Oh boy. All right, one minute left, guys. Who's got who's got the last question? Who's got the last uh statement of fact? Hey. Um, can you hear me? Yo yo, yeah, what's up? Yeah, just a just a quick question. Uh, how often do you do you just paint for yourself? You know, man, uh, <laughs> that's a that's a great question, man. Um, <laughs> I don't really, to be honest. I need to though. I think like I will say this. Um, the re I'm, I'm being like brutally honest with you. My professional answer is all the time, man. You know, but my real answer is, dude, I don't. Other than like, I, I, and I think that's like where the live stream stuff for me kind of comes in where it's like, it's usually something that I kind of want to do, right? Where it's like, that's because, you know, I'm picking the assignment for myself, essentially. Like you guys pick the topic, but I pick whatever I'm actually doing. And so like a lot of times, um, you know, for like I'll paint for work and then I will, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, just like do stuff for like teaching and classes and stuff. So oftentimes painting for myself like doesn't really happen that much which is kind of sad to be honest um but the really like what is happening here why is my computer being weird nope hold up sorry yeah like i don't really i haven't really done it as much as i would like you know and i think ever since i moved um i've been kind of like in this weird zone of like trying to figure out like how to rebalance that, you know? Because when you first start, everything's for yourself because you're not getting paid, you know what I mean? Like you don't <laughs> you don't work anywhere, so every, it's always for yourself, right? And then when you start working, a lot of it really does come down to like, oh yeah, 
you know, I, ha I have to work because I'm either doing freelance, I'm teaching, doing whatever. And your, your, your life kind of gets occupied by that, uh, that idea, right? Um, and it wasn't until like recently uh, where I started kind of rebalancing things. Like even before I was moving, I was already, already kind of moving back towards that just because of like some life things and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, th I started like trying to plan air more and I realized, I was realizing that like the more I was painting for myself, the more I started like bringing it back to, uh, the stuff that I enjoy doing. Right. Um, uh, my designs actually at work and things started getting better. It was really, it was really cool. Like I, I just, the ideas started flowing a little bit easier. Things started to kind of like, you know, just clicking a little bit nicer which is cool you know and so <clears throat> um you know a lot of it the, you know this whole back there back backstory therapy session um really comes down to like you know i i, I do need to paint more for myself but in, and i have been doing it a little bit more lately like i've done a couple paintings these past couple days just to get back in the zone you know <laughs> after like not touching a wacom tablet for like a couple months um but you know it is uh i th i do i do think it's important i do think it's something that uh, i need to kind of do uh more to kind of i guess i don't know like re kind of bring back that inspiration you know what i'm saying i don't know i don't know if that makes sense it's very ranty for a very simple question but <laughs> you know no no it's uh it's nice to it's nice to to know that I'm not alone because I haven't painted in, in months. Like I just, I just don't feel like doing it outside of work. Yeah. Are you, uh, so, um, I'm assuming you're, 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 you're a concept artist, correct? Or I guess an artist that, that does this day in, day out. Uh, I do, I do some freelance and I do teach at a, at a local school and just basic digital painting stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. But I am. Um, I don't do I don't do professional concepts. But yeah, but like your job like forces you to to do this more like like because your nor your normal kind of like I guess schedule is oh I'm just I, I need to like design something I need to do something basically it's uh, um, not designs for yourself essentially and then like because yeah you got to be a you got to be a little crazy to like to be a little to be honest to to work you know, 40 hours a week and then in your free time be like, Hey, let's draw some more. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm not saying that's like, uh, that's good or bad. But what I am saying is it's hard for a lot of, a lot of people that, you know, like have to actually like do this, like for, for a living, whether it's like actual concept art or other things, uh, that are art adjacent. Right. Um, it's, it's very difficult. I will, I will, I will a bit, it just to kind of maintain that balance, kind of like stay relevant this and that, you know? Um, but I mean, I think it's, it's trying to find that balance of like, <clears throat> uh, um, you know, what, what works for you and, and your, your scheduling and your, your life as a whole, you know what I'm saying? Just, oh, yeah. just a small question. Do you, do you schedule do you do you try to find the, the time to learn new things even if you are a professional oh all the time um you have to i think uh like something that uh oopsies <clears throat> something that you have to like as an artist uh especially in the entertainment industry nowadays right uh i mean as a whole for any any level or at, at any point in time but especially nowadays uh, it's really hard to keep up if you're not always learning something, you know, um, just because like yeah, there's new, there's new technology every day. There's always like this new trick. There's always a new artist doing something that's, sh that's putting the rest of us to shame. You know what I mean? Like there's always, <laughs> there's always something, but I think the, the thing about for, for me is that you have to be somebody that likes to learn somebody that enjoys the act of you know i guess uh putting themselves in an uncomfortable position right just because um if you if you get if you kind of like stop and you get stagnant you know it uh it it really kind of hurts your i guess 
designs, your originality, your you know, I guess even even just the work process as a whole, right? Because like like for example, when I first started, three D was like optional, right? Three D was something where like you don't really need to know it. Uh, I mean, you didn't you didn't, you didn't even need to like that wasn't even a question, right? Because like nowadays, like I, I would say most artists do need to like pick up three D and like at least understand what it is. The degree at which you need to know 3D varies from job to job, right? <clears throat> Animation, a little less. Film and games, a little bit more. Uh, but it is something where, um, you know, back then, it wasn't even that long ago, uh, you didn't really need to know. Like, photo bashing was, like, kind of new. <laughs> like, photo bashing was the question, like, do we need to photo bash to be a concept artist? You know what I mean? Like, that was a big question that was asked when I was in school, you know? Um, and so as for now for like for right now like you really have to want to learn you have to like want to adapt and grow because if you don't uh it really is a matter of time until your your kind of skill set gets um eclipsed by something else right if you're if you're really good at like a particular thing right like you have a little more longevity but if you're not somebody that's like super specialized like that um there is a tendency for those for for it to be harder to find work as you're kind of moving you know what i mean um not saying that's like always the case not saying it's never the case but it's it's just something where uh learning something new will always kind of keep you uh employed <laughs> just because you can offer more but but that in mind right learning something new does not mean 3d you know what I mean? Does not mean, oh, I have to pick up a 3D tool. Does not, uh, that's usually what people say nowadays. But all learning something new means is gaining a new skill that's relevant to whoever is going to be hiring you. You know, uh, it could be anything, right? You could learn cinematography. You could learn, um, you know, uh, storyboarding. You can learn better illustration techniques. You can learn how to watercolor. You can learn whatever, right? But the whole point is uh, you have to be just progressing in skill because this is how you stay relevant, right? Oftentimes, um, I'll get students that, like, take classes with uh, uh, with me or whatever, right? And they, they get their first job, and it's great. It's, like, it's awesome. Congratulations, right? And then they'll just, like, kind of take it easy. And then, like, within a year or whatever – um i'd be talking to them like oh i got let go or you know you know i uh they didn't really need me anymore and those things right and it's like you know for that first year or whatever you have to just be learning you have to keep growing you know uh as an individual but as an artist as well you know yeah, Finn Down says, uh, I did a few dance classes and I think it made me understand posing better. It comes from unexpected places. Exactly. Learn something. It, it doesn't have to be concept art, right? But all of it will lead back to concept art. And that's the cool part. I think like I learned how to, um, I learned how to solder, right? Like electrical things, you know? Um, I learned how to, uh, I, I took some blacksmithing classes. I, you know, did various things and like i'm just uh, for me i'm somebody that's a habitual learner like i just do that right I, uh, maybe it's add i don't know i never got diagnosed so i don't have it right but i'm just always kind of trying to do something and all of it always always leads back into uh um you know art somehow because it's what you do right like you you just can't help but like you know bring back those skills because it's just it's in your head now you just know it that's just what you do you know um so just be learning things right push yourself to like grow and develop as a person because if you develop as a person you'll develop as an artist right um oftentimes you know i'll get i'll be talking to people <clears throat> that like you know uh i don't like the way this one's going that one's terrible um I'll be talking to people where I'm like, oh, what do you do outside of art? Like, oh, nothing, you know? And I'm like, y you know, it's, it's, you can you live your life however you want, but it is something where I say you might want to like go back to being a normal person again, 
because before right when we were kids or when we were growing up right it's like you just did things you know and you didn't really care about it being uh relevant or not you just did it because it was fun you know but those things tied back into you know who you are as an artist now right but we stopped because oftentimes um it's like oh i have to find work so i i can only do these art things uh, but then we miss out on all these other opportunities to kind of grow as an individual. And then your art starts becoming stale because, you know, you're, you're like a shell of a human that you were before. You know, you don't really know much because you don't do much. And it becomes like this, uh, this endless cycle of like trying to find inspiration but not doing anything to find it. And then, you know what I mean? Um, sorry, I'm getting kind of ranty. But like, yeah, that's, that's the idea. <laughs> so, yes, always be learning. So that last design was trash. I was like trying to work with it. And I was like, I don't like where it's going, man. This is, um, it's cool. This is, I'm actually glad we're all seeing this. So first ones came out in 20 minutes, right? We even said this. And then like the next one that took a little bit longer and it's not even as cool as some of these first ones. And then like the, this fifth one is like, what is happening? And this went through like four or five different iterations. I transformed it, skewed it around, did whatever. And ultimately, I just kind of went, you know what? I just give up on it. And that's the whole idea, right? This is why we do thumbnails like this. We're just kind of running through the motions, right? We just make shapes and hopefully you find something cool. If not, it took you only a little bit of time, you know? And this one kind of looks like a potato. Anyway, um, you know, it's it's just trying to figure out like, you know, what uh, what kind of shapes kind of make sense, what kind of things kind of work together, you know? Um, but yeah, so I'll talk about more about this next week on like, uh, how this ties into, uh, form language, right? I mean, it's pretty clear as to how that is relevant. Hopefully it's not that crazy. Um, but yeah, this is, I, I wanted to spend today for, for one, kind of talk about like some of the, the general rules and stuff kind of moving forward. Uh, but also like trying to just spend a little extra time for uh for some technique things because you know we don't usually get that chance to kind of do those things you know what i'm saying so. but cool any uh any final questions before we dip out sick all right how's life post move it's good um you know it's uh it's been it's been nice. Like, I think, like, because the move itself, right, was, like, a, whatever amount of time. Like, I started moving in, like, April, right? So, like, from from America to here. Uh, but then, like, after, like, before that, I was, like, kind of in the, I, I'd been in the moving mentality for, like, six months. And it's actually been weird. Because, like, because, you know, we, we've no, we had known about... The fact that we were like gonna be going for a little while uh it wasn't like official or anything but we were like we we're going through the process we did all those things and <clears throat> um it was interesting because we were just kind of slowly paring things down and like just getting rid of things and like preparing but we didn't like quite know and weren't able to pull the trigger quite yet you know so that was but it's been like weird i, I i've kind of i find myself lately where i'm in the zone of like busy because i'm you know doing like mentorships and various things uh like that but also like like having like i don't want to say nothing to do but like you're just kind of sitting there like oh yeah i guess i am done it's like oh did i take care nope i did you know and uh it's been uh it's been fun but yeah all right Rama guess uh, what's the coolest vending machine you saw dude they're all cool man so <clears throat> and it's funny and it's i think the the most interesting part about the vending machines here right for one there's a there's an eel one uh, that sounds gross but i mean unagi the the eel bowl it's, it's really good but anyway there's a vending machine like down the street from me which is wild uh but then like i think the wildest thing was like learning that there's warm drinks in there too as well as cold right so you get the like so if you ever for those that have seen a japanese vending machine it's a vending machine and then there's a blue button and or there's there's some drinks with blue buttons and some drinks with red buttons and then 
at first I assume the red button means it's out, right? It's like there's no there's no more because that's usually what red means. Uh, this one just meant it's warm. So it's like you can get a warm tea instead of a, uh, a cold tea, essentially, you know. <clears throat> so that was pretty cool. Um, and it's in, I think the most interesting part, though, is that these vending machines look old. Like it's not like some brand new vending machine that's the only one in the building or the only one around. It's like like they they look like they're from the 90s. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy because it's like everything has kind of been like this, which I find uh, really interesting. You know, like because a lot of these things America doesn't even have yet, but it's something that uh, they've had for like. 30 years at this point you know like it's an old ass vending machine and they all do it you know but anyway i think i think that was the coolest part like kind of learning the differences and kind of seeing uh what um different places have to offer and like seeing the, like some of some of the history and things behind it you know so but yeah all right cool guys so uh this is what i got today this is what this is what i'm gonna show the last two i'm kind of like whatever about <clears throat> but um, something actually I, I did want to point something out something that I really enjoyed about uh, this process right like what I really like about this is when you're drawing and painting I think something that we did in like traditional media right when we we're actually doing this in class with like markers and stuff is that we would design these ships and things we did it just like this with like marker you kind of scribble you get you get a pencil out or a pen and you kind of like carve out the shapes and stuff right uh, but my teacher always told us, <clears throat> try to do them all on the same page because you get some cool, interesting shapes, right? Where like you did a ship up here and you did a ship over here. And then like this ship has to like form that shape because it doesn't fit otherwise. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of like pushes you to like to do kind of cool things. I know like I started off in certain things and I kind of moved it, but some of those movements kind of happened and allowed me to come up with uh more interesting shapes right so when you're ideating like this like really the goal and i want to re reiterate this from the first uh first conversation we had is like trying to push abstraction trying to push uh ge like just randomness right because especially for someone like me I'm a little more technical, technically minded when it comes to a lot of my art. So whenever I can, I try to push in abstraction. This way, uh, we get uh, you know a, a more unique push as as much as we can. Just because you know, it's like uh, if you don't start abstract, it only gets more and more kind of strangled from there, right? But if you start with something kind of wild and kind of interesting, we can dial that back as we're going into our final kind of push, right? Um, so that's all that's about. Um, pretty easy techniques. Uh, this will become mega relevant in the uh, in the coming weeks. So if you are trying to do this, um, you have you're gonna have two weeks to kind of go through this process. So if you wanted to start, you know you're gonna participate. Start now, right? Try it out. Just see how it goes. Don't worry about any references. That's a whole other thing. Uh, but just start making stuff. Scribble around. Make make blobs out of nothing. Uh, and then we'll uh, I'll kind of deep dive into this next week as to like how it's relevant to our um, re uh, reference board and things like that. Right. Um, so we'll be using this in the coming weeks. Just know that when you start doing your process, you can design however you like. But I do highly recommend doing it the way that we're kind of doing here because you'll you'll see the magic later so uh, hopefully it's magic maybe maybe it's trash who knows but cool guys uh with that in mind um thanks for hanging out you know i know today was a little bit less of an important day uh, but you know i really appreciate everybody stopping by uh hopefully we're gonna be getting into a normal live stream uh schedule uh or i guess timing and process and everything once my internet gets set up hopefully today um but yeah i you know i uh, really appreciate you guys like hanging out and you know being around right um and being patient with me the last two months uh we'll be getting back to doing some cool art stuff and uh, having some fun conversations so uh if you're new here come with questions right the more questions you have the better these sessions tend to be i don't care what it is don't be shy no one's gonna attack you uh we'll uh we'll kind of answer whatever questions you have and just talk about random things you know so 
Uh, Ian says, is this stream going to be posted on, on the Discord? Uh, it will be. It's going to be posted on um, the, the YouTube, just like normal. Um, except it's just locally recorded now, and then I'll post it afterwards, unlike normal live streams, just because internet. Uh, but yeah, so you'll be able to see this a little bit later. Um, timing might be a little longer than usual, just because I need to actually upload it. But uh, but yeah, so. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out, and uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's start uh, form language for world building. I'll uh, I'll get the uh, the live stream plus stuff up soon. If you're an old member, don't sign up for June. You have June already for free. For those of you that are new, please sign up. We'd love to have you. So, all right, guys. I will see Thank you, you uh, next, week. next week. Yeah. Thanks for the stream and welcome back. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Later, guys.